Welcome to worship for the fourth Sunday of the Easter season. Let us pray. O God, whose Son is the Good Shepherd, send us out as shepherds to seek the lost, to heal the injured, and to nurture all with grace and compassion through Jesus, who calls us each by name. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. May his grace and peace be with you. May he fill our hearts with joy. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, let the thoughts of our hearts find the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit. That we may perfectly love thee and worthy magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray. O God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, make us perfect in every good work to do your will, and work in us that which is well-pleasing in your sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Acts. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because of many wonders and signs that were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, As they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the Church. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of Peter. For it is a credit to you if, being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that free from sins we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed." For you were going astray like sheep, 
but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Jesus, Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger but they will run after him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, 
but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in, come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have that they may have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of Christ. Good morning. My name is Carolyn Cummins, and I am the Director of Fundraising and Supporter Relations with the Primates World Relief and Development Fund. Thank you so much for the invitation to be with you virtually today. So who knew that lambing is a verb? I didn't grow up on a farm, so I didn't know this until one of our volunteer diocesan representatives, a sheep farmer, told me a few years ago that she couldn't come to a meeting because she would be busy lambing. So I learned from Dorothy that lambing is the time in spring when female sheep give birth to their baby lambs and that it can be the busiest season in a sheep farmer's year. So when I first looked at today's reading about the shepherd and his sheep, I immediately thought of Dorothy and the lambing season. The reading talks about the shepherd, the one who calls his sheep by name and leads them out. His sheep follow him because they know his voice, but they won't follow a stranger. So maybe sheep are smarter than we thought. Back in Jesus' time, I was reading that sheep had to be very attuned to the voice of their shepherd because they were all put into the same pen overnight. So in the morning, the shepherds would call and the sheep would recognize the voice of, of their shepherd. For PWRDF's 60th anniversary, Dorothy and her daughter Leah, a member of PWRDF's Youth Council, were featured in a video called At Home with PWRDF, which you can still find on our YouTube channel if you're interested. The video followed Dorothy and Leah as they fed and watered and tended to their sheep. And as she checked on every sheep, making sure that they looked well and even asking them if they were okay, she shared some of her thoughts. She described being a farmer and a shepherd, raising sheep and pigs and grandchildren. And she noted that in the Bible, there are lots of stories about sheep. She said that every sheep has a different voice if you listen. The lamb knows the ewe's voice, and the ewe knows the lamb's voice. But she acknowledged they all say ba, but each in a bit of a different tone. So the shepherd knows each of the sheep, and the sheep know the shepherd. Dorothy said that when she went into the pen, the sheep knew her, and they'd come up to her trustingly. But if a stranger went into the pen, they wouldn't. Dorothy, as a shepherd herself, felt very strongly connected to following the Lord as her shepherd, the one who knows and recognizes each of us. Dorothy was an amazing woman with a true heart for PWRDF and for justice in the world. Those of us who knew her were devastated when she passed away last year after a short battle with cancer. But her legacy of love for her neighbor continues. Dorothy did not get overwhelmed by the incredible amount of need in the world. She was able to recognize Christ in every person, seeing everyone as unique and worthy, just as our shepherd does, saying, none of us can save the world, but each of us can help our neighbor one at a time. And in the end, if we do that, we are saving the world. PWRD's vision, a vision that Dorothy strived for in her daily life, is to help our neighbors near and far by working towards a truly just, healthy, and peaceful world. This vision guides all of our work. We know our world is hurting, and your support and prayers help us in building relationships of compassion and accompaniment. Support from Anglicans across Canada enables us to respond quickly to our partners around the world and here in Canada when a disaster strikes our neighbors. The support also sustains the work of PWRDF and our partners for longer term programs that make a world of difference to communities with programs that help people earn an income, 
training for community health workers, increasing the number of safe births and health clinics, support for refugees and displaced people, greater access to safe water, increased food security, and support for Indigenous organizations who are responding to the priorities of Indigenous people, clean water, language recovery, and community health. So let me break down our vision statement a little bit and share examples of some of our programs and partnerships around the world that help move us towards a truly just world. Our partners in Colombia strongly support women's rights and the importance of the right for women, the importance of the right for women to own land. In rural Colombia, a lot of women aren't aware of their land tenure rights. And even as Colombia returns land to those who lost it during the internal armed conflict there, Women are often not included in land titles and deeds and have difficulty proving that the land is theirs. And this is really important because women landowners can plant vegetables and raise crops to feed their families and communities and to sell in local markets to earn an income. All of our partners in Colombia advocate for protection of the environment, especially the fragile high, high altitude ecosystem known as the Paramos. This region acts like a sponge, collects rainwater and mist, that then become streams and rivers and lakes and creates 70% of Colombia's water supply. Our partners in Colombia support and encourage community members who run for office and are elected to town councils. And they in turn advocate for funding to protect the environment through community recycling, community radio, youth engagement, and laws to support those who are vulnerable. With partners around the world, PWRDF sees the impact of education against sexual and gender-based violence. Programs with the Pansy Foundation and Dorcas House in the Democratic Republic of the Congo stand with survivors, helping them to heal and restore dignity to their lives, and empowering them with new skills and helping them to transition back to their families and communities. In Uganda, where 31% of girls are married before they turn 18, our partner Aruwe is working to make girls less vulnerable to gender-based violence, child marriage, and intergenerational poverty. In Canada, Mexico, and Peru, we're supporting Indigenous midwives who are working together to ensure that their knowledge and their work is adequately recognized by authorities in their countries. In Canada, Indigenous women living on rural, remote, and northern reserves often have to leave their communities near the end of the third trimester and travel to urban hospitals to give birth, often to hospitals in cities they've never visited before, resulting in isolating and sometimes traumatic birth experiences. In Mexico and Peru, women who receive health services have been threatened with loss of access to social assistance programs if births are attended by indigenous midwives rather than doctors. Indigenous midwives struggle against discrimination and lack of visibility and recognition of their knowledge and contributions to the physical and mental well being of Indigenous women during pregnancy, childbirth, and postpartum. Our partners in these three countries are working together to ensure that Indigenous women have the right to a culturally appropriate birth, part of our work of supporting Indigenous peoples in their journey, journey of recovery and protection of their cultures. Of course, this work is also part of our mission towards a truly healthy world. So let me share a few more examples of our programs and partnerships that help us move towards a truly healthy world. In Lesotho, we've seen reductions in maternal and infant mortality because of community training and regular visits to pregnant and lactating women by community health workers. Community health workers in Malawi, refugees in Kenya, and farmers in Bangladesh are able to raise livestock to improve their family's food security and to sell at local markets. Small loans are offered by partners in Mozambique, in Kenya, and Colombia, and they're used to sell honey and coffee, manage tree nurseries, and other businesses that are made more successful with business training. During the pandemic, our partners have provided accurate information and guidance to their program participants, supporting vaccine delivery while working hard to preserve the pre-pandemic health results that they have been seeing. Our partner Musso in Mali is working hard to, as they put it, cure delay. They have diagnosed delay as a root cause of so many preventable health problem, problems, whether it's COVID or other illnesses. Delay in testing, delay in vaccinating, delay in treatment, nutrition, delay in providing information and education. 
and they are working hard to bridge those gaps. In Mozambique, we've provided solar suitcases, wall-mounted units that open up like a suitcase and they include phone charging, quartz, a uh, portable headlamp, and a fetal Doppler to monitor a baby's heartbeat, all connected to a roof-mounted solar panel to uh, 50 off-the-grid health clinics in rural areas. These are shining a light in the darkness and providing these clinics with a power source so the light can be on at night when we know most babies decide to be born. Finally, let me share a few examples of our programs and partnerships that help us move towards a truly peaceful world. Community members in Northern Colombia tell us that everything they do is to contribute to peace where the conflict of the past hangs like a shadow. Program participants paint signboards and place them around town squares and streets. The signs are about forgiveness, reconciliation and community events where those of all backgrounds can come together. With our partners in South Sudan, we support local community members who might have survived conflict to meet together for conversation and learning. With trainers and with the help of Pride and Shoe local language curriculum, community members identify common grounds for working and being together. Our partners are helping Ukrainian refugees find peace for themselves and their families, even while the war in their country continues. Fight for Right in Ukraine is helping people with disabilities to evacuate to safety and access medical supplies and services. The Voices of Children Foundation provides psychological assistance to children and their parents. And we've supported the implementation of mobile psychological support for those who've been displaced so that those families can feel supported and at peace. An 84-year-old Valentine who was forced to flee Kharkiv saying in an interview, our peaceful life came to an end when she described what happened is now living safely and peacefully in a long-term shelter provided by Hungarian interchurch aid in Vino Radiv. She reported being 200% happy there. In the work of climate action, partners talk about care for creation and being at peace with the environment. We hear about this in Uganda and Kenya, where there's work by women and men and young people to plant hundreds of thousands of trees and use local and innovative ways to ensure rainfall replenishes the soil through sand dams. We also hear the words of peace, including peace and right relations with the earth from our growing number of indigenous partners here in Canada, reminding us of commitments for the generations to come, our grandchildren and their grandchildren. PWRDF has a rich and long history of responding to the priorities of partners. We've learned about the importance of building relationships, of listening and of learning from each other of creativity and resilience. Partnership is what anchors our work with volunteers, partners, and we trust and hope with Anglicans in Canada on whose behalf all of this work is done. For all of this, we are grateful and encouraged. Amen. Let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say. God the Creator is a God of unity, not of division, of love, not of hate, of forgiveness, not of resentment. Out of love and compassion for our world, let us pray. Heighten our awareness, O God, that we may sense the texture, the complexion, and the sounds of the world around us. Help us to delight in the glorious spring sunshine the sounds of running water, the smell of freshly raked grass, and the gladness of new leaves yet to come. Awaken us to the beauty and wonder of creation. 
O God who makes us one, hear our prayer. For your church, that the good news we spread always heed the physical and social needs of our listeners. You call us into the church with people of different race, color, language, different experiences, and different traditions, that we may be one body to the glory of Christ on earth. Help us here at St. Luke's and in the wider church to be what you have called us to be. O God who makes us one, hear our prayer. For our world, that the peace of the risen Christ heal the wounds of all victims of injustice and exploitation, transform the hearts of those who lead the nations and who make public policy, that they may truly become makers of peace. We remember especially today Sudan, Ukraine, and all other areas of our world in turmoil due to war or natural disaster. O God who makes us one, hear our prayer. For those whose hearts are troubled through fear, poverty, sickness, or loneliness, that the love of Christ may make its home with them and fill them with peace. O God who makes us one, hear our prayer. We give thanks today for the work of PWRDF in Canada and the rest of the world, for their partnerships with many organizations, both at home and overseas, and the commitment to sustainable development and a just, healthy, peaceful world. We give thanks too for our families and friends. We hold them before you in our thoughts. And we pray for those on our parish prayer list. We commend to God any special needs known to us. O God who makes us one, hear our prayer. Nurturing God, show us this day amid life's dark streaks and suffering that the light endures in every person. Dispel the confusions that cling close to our souls that we may see with eyes washed by your grace, that we may see ourselves and all people with eyes cleansed by the freshness of a new day's light. Touch us with your spirit of justice and healing, that we may be a shelter for all in need. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our own heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. May Almighty God have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Let us pray. O God of loving care, you spread before us the table of life and give us the cup of salvation to drink. Keep us always in the fold of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Shepherd. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. We give you thanks and praise for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us eternal life. Therefore, joining our voices with the whole company of heaven, we sing our joyful hymn of praise to proclaim the glory of your name. give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. 
In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, whenever you drink it, for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command. We remember his death. We proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant, Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we, made acceptable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord, we died with you on the cross. Now we are raised to new life. We were buried in your tomb. Now we share in your resurrection. Live in us that we may live in you. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. God of steadfast love, watch over the church redeemed by the blood of your Son. May we who share in these holy mysteries come safely to your eternal kingdom, where there is one flock and one shepherd. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Amen. Glory to God. May the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.